In the previous video, we talked about setting up a very basic Spring Boot application, which you can see here on the screen. It has a very simple uh, starter, which just has a main function and uh, runs the Spring Boot application. And we also now need to set up our run for configuration for our app. So in IntelliJ, what you can do is go on to this little piece of information, go to edit configurations. Now, you need to select an application called a Squats Runner and then run it. If not, you can also use the Spring Boot's way of running the application. But I would say uh, the application way helps you to understand how Quartz or how a Spring Boot application works behind the scenes. So all you have to do is let's do it again. So we do a plus application. We can give it a name as Quartz Email. runner running it on local machine uh, the main class is something which we need to talk about so it's going to be quad schedule application and that's it so that's all you need to have your uh, runner ready and you can always just run it whenever you want to so that it's get it gets easier to have a, a runner ready you don't have to always click this you can always uh, click it here or the debug mode and then have your application running so coming to this video, uh, we'll be talking about the configurations or the properties that our application needs uh, to set up quads, to set up the database and also to set up our uh, mailing properties. So we'll be using uh, an email ID to actually send the emails, right? Or to schedule the email. So we need to also set up some properties there. So let's get started. So go to resources and to application properties. This is where basically we have all of our applications ready and the properties so now what we're going to do is uh, have them uh, write the application properties for our application so first comes the spring data source so the spring data source is basically uh, the database which will be connecting to your spring boot application and uh, some information regarding that which includes the url the username and the password so let me write uh, the ones for mine. I will not be giving it the values for now. Uh, I'll be doing it in the next video because the next video is going to be dealing about configuring, configuring our database and how we can set up our MySQL uh, server and integrate it with IntelliJ. So spring dot data source dot URL spring dot data dot user name and you can do a spring dot username dot password now uh, it is generally recommended that you do not have your password in plain text when it comes to enterprise applications or projects that you're deploying on let's say github or anywhere else so just for now uh, for uh, practice purposes will have our password in plain text but if you're using or using this to create an enterprise application or using it to create uh, or deploy it on uh, a provider or on github then make sure that your password is not uh, there in plain text and it's uh, modified or hashed in some way or the other so this is the proper these are the properties that we need for our spring data source which is going to be a mysql server which we talk about in the next video the second thing which we need is the quartz properties so let's start uh, writing them so the first is going to be spring dot quartz dot job store type now, as you can see, these have these have two options. One is JDBC, which we are going to use, where it stores your jobs in the database. Uh, the upside or the advantage of this is that whenever you uh, shut down your application, then uh, restart it again, it takes up all the failed jobs or it restores the jobs from the database and then runs it again so that you always have that job running. It's never in the failed scenario unless uh, something happens from the user point of view. Next is storing it in memory. So this is basically uh, a way of quads to show, store your 
jobs in memory only not inside data, external database so whenever you shut down an application and then uh, run it again the jobs get uh, destroyed and then uh, new jobs have to be created uh, whenever you restart your application so since we need our uh, jobs to be persistent and to be inside a database we'll be using jdbc uh, method for the value the next is the thread pool count so the spring dot parts dot properties arg dot quads dot pool dot set count maybe so this is basically the amount of threads that you want your application to use when it's uh, scheduling its jobs. So for example, if you have two or three jobs which are uh, scheduled for the same time, you can have five threads in which each of the thread will have its, in, uh, its own job running uh, at the same time so that it's easier, it's less load for the application and for that particular thread. So next comes our mail properties. So since we'll be scheduling our mail, uh, using uh, scheduling our mails, we'll have to have an email from which we send it from and we also have to tell it what the protocol is what uh, kind of things are we using so let's uh, add them so the first property is the host and since I'll be using Gmail to showcase uh, the demo I'm, I'm using the I'm using Gmail simple mail transfer protocol or smtp.gmail.com. So the next two properties are the port and the username. So port is basically the port in which you would want to send the mail through. So for here I have 587 and the username is my email ID and you can also email me on this email ID if you have any doubts regarding your uh, resume, if you want to talk about your cover letter, how to get jobs, uh, how to get a software engineering job later on. So this is the email which I use and next is going to be the password. So I will not be writing that here but you know uh, again you should not have your password in plain text but you should have them uh, hashed so spring dot okay so these are the basic properties that you need to make sure that your application has enough uh, it needs to build up the email scheduling app the next thing which comes in is two uh, I would say a necessary properties one being the authentication and the other being start TLS so we'll have that for now and I'll talk about them later in the upcoming videos so let's just input those properties now So with these properties now we have our application ready uh, to start building it and then schedule jobs and schedule emails but before we do this we need to have an additional step which we need to make sure that we are doing so that we uh, have our emails which are actually being sent to the receiver. So since we are using Gmail, Gmail uh, by default does not allow you to send emails through a less secure application and since we have literally no security in our application it will be hard uh, for us to actually uh, let Google send our emails and we'll just prohibit it or mark it as spam or just do not send them. So what we need to do is go to this URL so the URL will also be in the description below and scroll down so this is the security part of Google's account scroll down to less secure apps and you should uh, make sure that you turn it on so you can click here when it says turn on and then click it to turn on 
and make sure that you do this only after reading what's happening here i do not recommend this it's just something which i have done so make sure that this is turned on which you want to use the smtp.gmail.com for your particular uh, email scheduling app so this is all for this video in the next video we'll talk about how we can set up the database for quartz uh, on intellij so we'll have a database ready here as you can see a quartz demo how to do this how do we actually have our quartz table so we'll have these kind of tables and we'll talk about what all of them mean we'll also talk about what quartz is uh, the terminal the terminologies behind quartz and uh, how powerful quartz is when you have to actually schedule an email and how easy it becomes when you want to do it so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one